Hey guys, welcome in this new video and welcome in the first episode of CX Update. From now on, I'm going to make a monthly video where I share my insights and my inspiration and the examples that I see that I think are striking in the world of customer experience. So welcome in this first episode, everyone. If you want your innovation to be successful, then of course it's crucial to look at the customer experience. And, and more specifically, it's really crucial to make sure that you remove every single barrier there is for a successful adoption. And I saw a really cool example this, uh, this month by John Deere. So we're starting in B2B in agriculture. They launched a self-driving tractor, a fully autonomous tractor that farmers can control by their phone. Um, it was announced at CES. Maybe you've seen it. It's really, really cool. And of course, driving a tractor on a field is easier than a self-driving car on a road. Uh, there, there's less context to take into account. But still, if you want this to be successful, then it's crucial that the farmer doesn't have to do anything. I mean, if the farmer has to sit in the self-driving tractor to you know, react if something goes wrong, then there is no time efficiency. So if you want this to be a success, you need to make sure that you offer a full service where every barrier is removed. And they use technology for that. Like, for instance, the, the tractor can, can recognize the difference between a bird or a dog. Like, if there's a bird on the field, the tractor will just keep on going because it knows that the bird will fly away. If there's a dog, the tractor will stop. And at, at the moment that, you know, that the tractor recognizes something that could be a danger or when it doesn't recognize something, then the tractor itself will call to a human contact center. And the humans there will take over control of the tractor so again, the farmer doesn't need to be involved here. So they, they removed every single barrier. They made sure that the tractor can do all the work by itself. And then of course you have that efficiency gain for the farmer. And then this is a great investment and a great innovation for them to use. And, and I love this example. Uh, it's, it's thinking about what are the objectives that people can have when they have to buy something new and how can we remove them one by one? I've met too many companies that tell me, hey, Stephen, we launched something new, but you know what? Our customers, they're not ready for it. Um, I don't agree with that. I think if you launch something and it's not a success, usually it means that you didn't do a well enough job and that the quality or the expectations of the customer were not met. So the, the challenge is to make sure that you understand what blocks adoption and then remove those one by one. In the past few years, I talked quite a lot about effortless customer interfaces um, and the fact that if you want to be successful, that you need to go for a zero customer effort in every phase of the customer journey. And if you look back to the past decade, this is exactly how companies like, like Uber and Amazon became a big hit because they were the best in customer convenience. Today, we live in a world where the ultimate convenience has become a commodity. That means that if you are not convenient enough, that you're going to lose the game. And it also means that if you're very convenient, that people will think it's the most normal thing in the world. Today, it's like a basic need. What we're going to see in the next 10 years is the evolution where we evolve from effortless interfaces to enhanced interfaces. If you, if you listen to everything that Mark Zuckerberg has been talking about related to the metaverse and the opportunities he sees there, um, it's very clear that the next phase is going to be convenience plus entertainment and convenience plus digital reality. Uh, three-dimensional opportunities. Think about new forms of entertainment. Think about new forms of being in a professional meeting. That will change completely because of the metaverse. And it's going to be a completely new way of thinking where effortless is like the most normal thing of the world and making it really enhanced and cool will be the differentiator. L look, this is the first episode of a new video series. So, you know me, there, there had to be an example from Disney in this video. And I got really excited to hear that Disney went for a few patents related to metaverse technology. Um, and this is also the proof that the metaverse is not just a digital only kind of thing, but that you can bring it to the real world as well. And that augmented reality is going to play a crucial role there as well. So Disney really dreams about creating theme parks where you can just add digital experiences to everything that you see in here. Just think about how 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 they could change Disney World if all kind of digital characters tend to walk around where you are, if you can meet Mickey digitally so that you don't have to wait in line to have a picture with the physical Mickey, 
you can just talk to a virtual Mickey all the time. Uh, think about how you could really reinvent waiting lines. Why, if you have to wait for 30 minutes or an hour for a ride, imagine what the metaverse could do with waiting in line. So this is, in my opinion, a next phase of interfaces where we're really going to reinvent the entire experience for the customer. One of the big challenges in customer experience these days is the shortage of employees. Uh, there, there are many reasons why many businesses are suffering to find enough people. A lot of people are quarantined, but we're also facing with what they call in the US the great resignation, where more and more people just resign from their, from their jobs and, and don't seem to come back. Um, so there's a big challenge in every industry to make sure that you have enough staff to fulfill the customer service that you would like to give to your customers. Uh, you, you see it everywhere. You see it in retail stores. You see it in restaurants. I was in, in New York a couple of weeks ago, and I just saw entire restaurants and businesses being closed because they didn't have enough staff. So you can imagine what that will do with the war of talent. Uh, the war for talent will, will become even more intense than it ever was before. And it has a big impact on, on the future of customer experience. And I, I saw this really interesting case study that you know, rethinks the way customer service will be done if you're having a hard time finding the right people to help you. And it's an example that my, my good friend Pascal Koppen shared with me. It's an example from JD. Um, JD is one of the top two e-commerce companies in, in China. I had the pleasure of visiting them multiple times and they are one of the experts in the world in terms of delivery services. I remember during our last visit that they were talking about lightning delivery. They told us that their average delivery time was 30 minutes. And I'm talking about 2019. In 2019, the average delivery time of JD in China was 30 minutes. And then they told us that is way too slow. We need to go for lightning delivery. We need to deliver in five to 10 minutes. And we thought that was a crazy idea. But then now what you see is that JD opens up a number of stores in, in Europe and they're actually robotic stores. And the truth is that you can just buy online whatever you want and then you have to go and pick it up in this store where a robot then delivers your package. So this is not an Amazon Go kind of store. You don't walk in and take stuff from the shelves. No, you first go to the app or you first go to the website and basically you buy whatever you want. They have everything. And then you go to that pickup place to get the, the things that you just ordered. And the reason why JD is doing it like this in the Netherlands is because they believe that they won't find enough staff to do the delivery in the way that they like to do delivery. In, in China, you still have like a couple of hundred of million people that like to drive around with a little motorcycle to deliver a package. In Western Europe, you don't find those people anymore to do that. So JD turned the entire model upside down and completely reinvented the delivery and e-commerce model because they believe that this is the way forward to deliver uh, the, the service that they want. And I thought it was striking. Uh, in the past 10 years, maybe the question that I got most often during presentations was this one. Stephen, artificial intelligence, that's really cool, but won't robots steal our jobs away? And today, if you talk with people, it's like the opposite. They're like, can we bring in the robots faster? We need robots. There are not enough humans out there to help us with our customer service. So you see how things change over time. The last topic of this week's video is from empathy to compassion. And, and this insight is based on an article that I read in the Harvard Business Review, connect with empathy, but lead with compassion. Uh, we, we talk a lot about empathy and customer experience, myself as well. I've written a few pieces on it. I talk a lot about it in my keynote. But it's interesting to ask yourself, can we go one step further than empathy? Uh, and I, I like this model where you say, okay, I, I feel sorry for you. Sympathy is I feel for you. Empathy is I feel with you. I understand what's going on. And compassion goes one step further. Cons compassion is about, I'm going to help you out. And that is probably what a customer really wants. They don't just want you to share their emotions. They also want to be helped. Uh, and if you think about it, the, the really basic needs of customers are these three words. A customer wants to be seen, a customer wants to be heard, and a customer wants to be helped. And if you're really good in all three of them, you're probably going to score points on empathy and compassion. 
And I thought it was interesting to see and to understand that if you really want to help out a customer, empathy is no longer enough, but we need to go one step further and move into compassion and actually really help our customers further. That was the last topic of this week's video. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the new format. Uh, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel, tell others about this video, and I hope to see you again next month for a new episode of my CX update. Thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.